Let's use e4. e6. So I played another French defence. d4, d5, knight c3. Winner. Knight f6, e5. Um, okay, so I chose, chose to play knight fd7. Knight e4 is also an option that I played online a couple of times. That I don't know, I think it's a little dubious. So I play knight fd7, f4, c5, knight f3, and now queen b6. Okay, so norm, the normal move is you play knight c6 first, then queen b6. Well, queen b6 is not really a move after knight c6. Um, so if you play queen b6 first, now after knight a4, you can play queen c6. Before, if you go knight c6, bishop b3, and now queen b6, which is not very popular this line, because now after knight a4, you have to play queen a5 check, c3, um, and now something like c4. And this gets a bit congested. So, the idea of playing queen b6 first is now after knight a4, because it will bishop e3. Then the pawn on b2 is hanging. So knight to a4, and now I can play knight uh, queen c6, attacking the knight and preparing to play b5. So now Maria played c3. So now the queen protects the knight, and now I want to play c4 with the idea of playing b5. Um, so now b3 is played. So after b5, um, Maria can play knight b knight b2. B5 now, now knight B2, knight B6. Okay, so taking on. Well, I can take on B3, but. Because now I'm threatening to take on C3. And after Queen takes A6 to defend this pawn, and after A4, I just don't have enough time. And I need my knight to already be at this square now. So. Instead, I played knight b6 first. Now, with the idea of being able to take um, bishop d2, so now the pawn is no longer um, a target after pawn takes b3. So now I'll go a5, ready just to launch these pawns forward, maybe b4. So now a4, which is a good move. Now bishop a6, knight takes, bishop takes b5, and now knight a4. So again, she's stopping me playing this a4 move, gaining space. Because if I get in, say if she goes bishop e2, I can just play a4 and then save something like b4, a3, and oh, actually, this knight's already short of squares, and, but also it's losing a piece. So, knight a4 is a good move. Now I bring my other knight out, it's ready to take and then bring the next knight in. Bishop to c1, so it's to come and swap off my good bishop for a bad bishop. So now I take on b3, and knight takes b6. Well, if queen takes b3, um, she loses a piece. So. Um, so knight takes b6 first, and now knight takes b6. Queen takes b3, so my bishop is on pre. So she takes f1. This is stopping her from castling. Rook takes f1 and now a4, getting time on the queen. And now I was a little worried about her playing f5 at some point, so she now the rook's on f1 and the knight can jump into g5. So I always play g6 here, stopping those ideas. And now knight d2, bishop to b4. So the can't, bishop can't be taken because the queen's pinned. Knight to b1, bishop to a5, rook to a2, king to d7. So I don't, I don't want to castle kingside because then if I do this, that's a possibility of rook coming across and then the queen getting over here. And it's going to be very hard to defend, my king's going to get stuck. So instead, instead I played king d7, now to bishop a3. Knight to c4. As you can see, I'm planning to go knight e3. Bishop to c1, and now rook h to b8. Rook f3. 
rook to b3, rook a1, rook a b8, and now king d1. So my opponent, I don't think, really knows what she's doing. She's just hoping to um, get a draw here. And you know, hoping that I can't break through. So eventually I just went h5, stopping any g4 and f5 ideas. And now, oops, can you want h5? And now g3. And g3 is a big mistake now, because now I can play rook. Well, I actually played rook to uh, b7. What I missed is rook b2. And now after this move, if queen takes a4, queen takes a4, rook takes a4, I can just take on b1. And if um, bishop takes, rook, rook takes, and then if queen c1, I can take on h2 with the threat of rook check. So the rook comes back. Now after queen b5, there's all sorts of nasty threats going on. And white is completely lost. So I unfortunately missed that. I just you know, waited to see what she was doing, so I just played this, this move. Um, and a h3, bishop to d8. So again, I could have played rook to, rook to b2. I keep missing it. Bishop to d8, and after rook f2, this is finally, finally I see it now. Rook f2, now I'm just picking up a whole rook as well. So, on the point of this move now is if bishop takes, I can just play knight to e3 check, win the queen. Okay, so my opponent actually did play, bishop takes b2. Um, and now after knight e3 check, king d2, knight takes c2, queen takes c2, queen b5. Taking the bishop, and now after king c1, bishop b7. I'm looking to get this a pawn going. Rook a2, queen to d3, knight to d2, a3. Obviously, if bishop takes a3, I can just play queen takes c3. So we should have to go back to. Well, she could play bishop a1, but. Well, she took on a3, and after queen takes c3, king d1. I can't take here. Well, I can, but then. Rook f3. So I played queen takes d4. So now I'm attacking the rook. Also threatening to go queen a4 check and win the bishop. King, d king e2, queen a4, pinning the bishop against the rook. Rook f3, rook a7. Bishop takes e7. Bishop take queen b5 check. Well, to check now, I can capture the rook with my rook instead of the queen. I get the rook into the game. So rook d3, rook takes a2, bishop d6. Now h4. So the idea of this move is just to break up these pawns. And so after g4, I can bring my rook to a4 and attack. Start attacking these pawns and you know maybe bring my rook to e4 with check. So king e3, queen b6 check, king f3, queen to g1. And now you see how useful this pawn is. Now threatening queen g3 check. Um, so after knight b3, queen g3 check. King e2, queen g2 check. King e3, and now rook e4, check mate. So it took a while to win in the end. And Marie is always a hard player to break down. She just fell apart with the rook f2 move earlier on. Although I kept missing this, like, this whole idea of going rook b2. It's only after she put rook on f2 I, I saw it. So, it was a good game nevertheless. And thanks for watching.